Hello everyone. On this video, we will be looking at some practical applications of rational functions, or basically story problems. All right, so let's take a look at the first one. Okay, so let's say at 10 a.m., there are 115 performers and 1,200 spectators at a music festival. After 10 a.m., five performers leave every 20 minutes and 50 spectators arrive every 20 minutes. What is the ratio of performers to spectators at 12 p.m. noon? All right, so what I want you to do is press pause and try to tackle this one on your own, just to see how you do. All right, so I'm assuming you've pressed pause and worked it out, so let's go ahead and verify your answer. Okay, so first thing you want to do is create an equate create really two equations create an equation for the number of spectators and the number of performers after 10 p.m. I mean 10 a.m. Okay. Now for our performers, we'll let that be P of X. Okay. And our X will be the number of 20 minute intervals. Because the performers and the spectators leave and arrive every 20 minutes. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so we know at exactly 10 a.m., there are 115 performers and five performers leave every 20 minutes. So that's minus five times a 20 minute interval because after 20 minutes, five leave. After 40 minutes, 10 leave and then go and go and go. Okay, now for the spectators, We'll let that be Q of X. Okay, so we see here that 1,200 are there at 10 a.m., but then 50 arrive every 20 minutes. Okay, now what do we know about 10 a.m. and the noon time that we're looking for? that between 10 a.m. and noon, there are six 20 minute intervals. Okay, because it's two hours, so you have 20 minutes, 40 minutes, 60 minutes. In 20 minutes, 40 minutes, 60 minutes. So you have six 20 minute intervals. Okay, so to find our ratio, our f of x is going to be our p of x over q of x, which is 115 minus 5x over 1200 plus 50x. And what if we let x equals 6? Okay, then that's going to equal 115 minus 5 times 6 over 1,200 plus 50 times 6. 
okay, which equals 85 over 1,500, which is a ratio of 17 to 300. Okay, so for every 17 performers, there are 300 spectators. All right, so if you are still watching, or still watching, still writing, I hope you're still watching. If you're still writing, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and move on to our next example. Okay, so let's say at 11 a.m. there are 400 members and 159 members visiting a museum. After 11 a.m., 10 members leave every five minutes and five non-members arrive every five minutes. What is the ratio of members to non-members at 1 p.m.? Okay, so what I want you to do is press pause and try to solve this one on your own. All right, so I'm assuming you've paused it and you've worked this out, so let's go ahead and verify. Okay, so just like before, we're going to set up our two equations. But for this one, you have your members equation. Okay, so we can see we'll make that our P of X. You can make it any P of X, R of X, F of X, G of X, doesn't matter. Okay, so your members, we'll make that our P of X. So there were 400 at 11 a.m. And 10 leave every five minutes. So if we let our x equal the number of five minute intervals, we see if 10 leave every five minutes, then that's minus 10x. And that's for the members. Now for your non-members, we'll make that our Q of X. Okay, so we see that there were 150 non-members at 11 a.m. And five left. Well, five arrived, sorry about that. 5 arrived every 5 minutes. So that's plus 5x. Okay. So what do we know about what's going on between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m.? Well, we know that there are 24 5-minute intervals. between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. Uh-oh. Okay, so if you go 11 a.m., 11.05, 11.10, 11.15, 11.20, and it keeps on going, you have 24 of those five-minute intervals. So that means f of x is equal to, in other words, your member to non-members ratio that's your p of x over your q of x. Okay, which is going to equal your 400 minus 10x over 150 plus 5x. And again, we're going to let our x equal 24 five minute intervals. Okay, so that's going to equal 400 minus 10 times 24 over 150 plus 5 times 24. Okay, move that up a little. So that's going to equal 160 
over 270, which simplifies to be a ratio of 16 to 27. Okay, so by 1 p.m., there are 16 members for every 27 non-members. All right. Okay, so if you are still writing, feel free to press pause and finish up. But we're going to go ahead and move on to our next example. Oops. Yeah. Here we go. Okay, so what if you have a chess player that won three out of four games, or 75%, of her matches during a tournament. Her goal is to win 90% of the tournament matches she plays. How many more consecutive tournament games would she need to win to meet her goal? Okay, so what I want you to do is go ahead and press pause and try to solve this one on your own. All right. So this one's a little bit different than the previous two. Let's see if we can figure it out. Okay, so she won three out of four of her matches, which is 75%. Okay, we want to find out how many more consecutive matches would she need to win to reach her 90% goal. Okay, so what if she won one more? Then that would be four out of five. Or you can see it as three plus one over four plus one. What if she won two more? Then and that would be five of, out of six, or three plus two, or four plus two. Okay, you can kind of see where this is going. So if we kept this up, we know our f of x could equal three plus some number x over four plus x. Okay, so this will represent the winning percentage if she wins x additional games. Okay. Now, we want that percentage to be 90%. Let me kind of block this off a little bit. To be 90% or 0.9. Okay, so we want to find out. 3 plus x over 4 plus x, what would our x be in order to get 90%? And then we just solve for x. Okay, so if we multiply both sides by 4 plus x, then that's 3 plus x equals 0.9 times 4 plus x. Okay, so we can go ahead and distribute this 0.9 and that will give us 3 plus x equals 0.9 times 4 is 3.6 plus 0.9x. Okay, so if we subtract 3 from both sides, that gives us x equals 0.6 plus 0.9x. Now if you subtract 
0.9x from both sides. That gives us 0.1x equals 0.6. Divide both sides by 0.1, and we get x equals 6. Okay, so that's how many more consecutive matches she would need to win in order to reach her 90% goal. All right, so if you are still writing, feel free to press pause and finish up, but we're going to go ahead and move on to our next part, our next page, which covers guidelines for graphing rational functions. All right, so what if we let our function f of x equals p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are both polynomials. They'd be any polynomial. Okay, so first thing you want to do is you want to factor and simplify if you have to, if it's not already factored. Then you want to find your y-intercept by making your x equals zero. And you want to find your x-intercept by making y equals zero or f of x equals zero. Then you want to find your vertical asymptote just to make sure your denominator doesn't equal zero. Then you want to find your horizontal or slant asymptotes if necessary. Okay, so instead of drawing each of these, we're just going to have like a multiple choice option that I printed up and we're going to pick our graph. Okay, so if you are still writing this, feel free to press pause, but we're going to go ahead and move on to our examples. Oops. All right, so what if we wanted to identify the graph of the function f of x equals x minus 2 times x minus 5 over x minus 3 squared? Okay, so we have these options here. All right. So you can do these in any order you like. You don't have to put them in the order that I listed. Okay. So the first one, you know, it's already simplified. It's factored and it's already factored. Okay. So we go to the second step. Our y-intercept when x is equal to zero, if you replace x with zero up here, you end up with the y-intercept of 0, 10 over 9, which is the same as saying 0, uh -oh, 1 and 1 ninth. All right. So we see here that you don't have a 0, 1, and 1 ninth, but what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and do the x-intercept just so we can start eliminating some. Okay, so x-intercept, where y equals 0, you have x minus 2 and x minus 5. So x minus 2 equals 0, or x minus 5 equals 0. So x can equal 2 or x can equal 5, so that gives you the x-intercept of 2, 0, and 5, 0. Okay, now our vertical asymptote, the only value that would give us a denominator of 0 is x equals 3. Okay, so we go through all of our options and we see which one of these meets those criteria. Okay, so we have a y-intercept at 0 and 1 and 1 ninth. Okay, so we see here that our x-intercept, also our x-intercept, is at 2, 0, and 5, 0, because 1 and 1 ninth isn't that easy to identify. 
So we'll start with this one. So if you have two zero, what we see here, that that, that doesn't have a two zero x intercept. Okay, if we look at this one, we see that this does not have a two zero x intercept. Okay. We see here you have two zero and five zero for your x intercept here. But if you notice your y intercept, it's not at zero and one and one ninth. Okay, so we know this isn't it. Okay, so if you see here, you have your x intercept at zero, at two zero and five zero. You have your one and one ninth, it's about one and one ninth for your y intercept. You have a vertical asymptote at x equals three. This looks like it could be our winner, but let's look at this one. Well, you notice here this is already off because the x intercepts aren't it. So this is our answer. That's f of x equals x minus 2 times x minus 5 over x minus 3 squared. Okay, so we were able to identify it just by using the steps. And again, like I said, you don't have to go in this particular order. You can go in whatever order you like. This is just a process that helps you do it until you figure out your own way. All right. So if you are still writing, feel free to press pause, but we're going to go ahead and move on to our next page. OK, so what if you have f of x equals x plus one times x minus three over x minus one squared? OK, so you can see it's already factored. So we don't have to do that. So our y-intercept, you make our x equals 0, you end up with negative 3. So our y-intercept is 0, negative 3. And our x-intercept, remember y is equal to 0, or f of x is equal to 0. So you have x plus 1 can equal 0, or x minus 3 can equal 0. So that means x can equal negative 1, or x can equal 3. So your x-intercept is negative 1, 0, and 3, 0. All right, so let's look at these first before we go to the slant asymptote. Okay, so you have your y-intercept at 0, negative 3. So that's at 0, negative 3. You have your x-intercept at negative 1, 0, and 3, 0. So you have negative 1, 0, and 3, 0. Okay, so this looks like it could be our graph, but let's check the others. You have y-intercept is 0, negative 3. Looks like it could be at 0, negative 3. You have your x-intercept at negative 1, oh, not at negative 1, 0. So that one's not it. Okay, oh, not at negative 1, 0. So no x-intercept at negative 1, 0. And no intercept on this one at negative 1, 0. Okay, this one's at negative 1, 0, 3, 0. Oh, but our y-intercept isn't at 0, negative 3. So this isn't it. So this appears to be our graph. All right. So hopefully this made sense to you, and I'll see you on the next video.